One of the indicators of all-terrain vehicles of road performance is the ability to overcome such natural obstacles like marshland, gullies and swampy brooks, rivers, lakes, etc. It is an open secret that the Russian North, for the most part of it, is precisely such kind of areas, underpopulated and inaccessible. Nevertheless, these areas require transport service by traditional approach, that is, construction of roads is too expensive and thus unsuitable. Vehicles with low-pressure tires allow to solve these problems excluding global costs and without harming the environment. This video clearly demonstrates the functionality of the AT vehicle Burlak in marshlands, as well as floating in open water. I'm not going to take away time from viewers by listing the main characteristics of the AT vehicle, since all the information is available in the first part. So I will explain some points presented in my video. All marshlands are heterogeneous, moreover, they have their specifics depending on the region, and marshlands of moderate climate are different from marshlands of tundra and forest tundra. However, the basic principle of crossing marshland for wheeled vehicles in general is the same. The key factor is relationship between wheels displacement and the AT vehicle weight. Marshlands are water-saturated, and the more wheels push the vehicle out towards the surface, the better the off-road capability is. The vehicle is just not able to drown. This is the first factor. The second factor is the ability to lock all the wheels. It seems easy, but there is one unpleasant moment. At full lock there is no torque redistribution in the direction of least resistance, and transmission load in this case increases significantly, that can lead to breakdowns. The third factor is geometric off-road capability. It is ground clearance. The higher it is, the better. Ground clearance of Burlak AT vehicle is about 750 mm. The vehicle is equipped with flat underside. Unlike vehicles with bridge connection, Burlak is able to crawl on its underside through marshland like on a ski, without clinging and without creating additional resistance. Then there is almost total absence of front and rear overhang. The video shows the moment of the vehicle exit from the water. If there was an overhang, the vehicle would bump up against the edge of marshland and it would take some effort to overcome the obstacle. The fourth factor is weight distribution, that is evenly distributed weight of a vehicle on its axis. The fifth factor is the minimum stable speed. At minimum speed up to 1 km per hour, the wheels, if they fit correctly and you have selected the correct pressure, trample down the heterogeneous and shifting soil of marshland, and the lower the speed, the less resistance. Thus, the easier it is for a vehicle to move. It is a rule, but there are exceptions. When all wheels of a vehicle get into moss hag, or a pit with peat, it is sometimes useful to press on the gas pedal and move a little to steering wheel to create at least minimum forward movement. Understanding of these points usually comes with driving experience.
the last, the sixth factor is the wheels. We don't speak about the size here. When it comes to the size of wheels, we go back to the factor number one, the displacement. Here I mean another thing, the elasticity of wheels. It is very difficult to find the middle ground so the wheels allowed the vehicle to move on solid ground with a reasonable speed, since it is very difficult to avoid large distances in the north, but yet the tire could be bled to minimum pressure for overcoming marshlands and snow. That is sometimes essential. It is popularly believed that grocers on tires must be more explicit, but in this case the environment suffers because a grocer bumps into marshy ground and as wheels move it pulls out the top layer of ground or moss. We have used a different principle for Brulac. Due to the elasticity of rubber and large bearing surface area of all wheels, the ground pressure is much lower than the pressure of average person walking light. That means, from the point of view of ecology, the damage, if there is any, is minimal and after a few days it will be impossible to determine the place where the vehicle passed. The availability of system that controls tires pressure right from the cabin also offers advantages for off-road capability, because it is not always possible to go out and bleed the tires to needed pressure if the vehicle is moving through marshland. Besides all the listed, there's also a winch and water propeller. But everything is clear regarding this and there is no need to focus our attention on it. Long travel suspensions are also not necessary for working version since the elasticity of tires helps to absorb the road unevenness up to 12 inches plus 8 inches of suspension travel. So the general index is quite acceptable. That's all. As you can see, there are no miracles, everything is explainable and I have just one addition to all the above mentioned. Human factor must be always considered. Anyone can easily destroy even the most reliable all-terrain vehicles. And then argue that the vehicle sucks, and so on. The vehicle requires understanding. I don't even mention love and care, but understanding is necessary for sure. Thanks for watching this video up to the end.